In this video, we're going to take a look at the scale options of the extrusion tool. So let's start that. Look at the tool settings window. Here are the scale factors, X and Y. So you're scaling in the X and Y axes, and the default is one. Let's see what happens when we change this. So first I'm going to draw a block. And right now I'm working in metric. So I'm going to draw a block which is 300 by 300. Is my 300 square block. And I'm going to start the extrusion tool and change my scales to 1.5 in each case. So enter and I get 1.5 for both. The original I will not keep at the moment. And orthogonal is on. Now I can extrude. Now it's very important that you extrude from the correct place. And in this place, I want to extrude from the center of this block. So I need to select a point. I need the center. I need to use the C shortcut. There's my center. Left click and drag. And I'm going to extrude a distance of 450 millimeters. So type in 450. And there's my extrusion. Let's have a look at this shaded. And if you measure the top of this, Let's do that right now. The measure from there to there. We see that we have 450 in the distance setting for AccuDraw at the bottom of the screen. So that's worked out perfectly. So that's the 300 times 1.5 gets us 450. And that's our new size for the extruded top face. Now it doesn't matter how high I make the extrusion. The distance dimension is not a multiplier of the scale. So I could make this a couple of meters long, but the top and bottom sizes will be exactly the same. That's an important point to keep in mind. So try that for yourself quickly, and then we'll move on to a small exercise. Now here's the exercise, and you have a copy of this in a file called extrusionexercises.pdf, which you'll find in your working files folder. So you should open that up and use that for dimensional information. And let me turn this back into a wireframe. What you have is actually three parts to this. We have an extruded block at the back end. We have an extruded block at the front end. And in between, we have a scaled extruded block. Let me show you what I mean. Let me do a quick rotation here so we can see what we've got. And look at that centerpiece. It is a scaled extrusion. And we want to keep the extrusion symmetrical. In other words, the extrusion fits perfectly in the center. You'll see why this is important shortly. Now I'm going to draw this with you. So we need the back end first, which is a simple extruded block. And the dimensions are 600 by 300. And I'm working in metric here. And it's 1200 millimeters long. So we'll start with that. So I need a profile first. So place block tool. And I'll start about here. And I need to rotate the compass to that. The block I need will be 600 by 300. So 600, down arrow 300. There's my block. I'll leave that there. This is my profile. Let's take that back to wireframe. And now I can start my extrusion tool. Now I have to change this back to 1. Otherwise, we will change the scale of this thing, which I don't want to do. I'm putting keep original back on again, and you'll see why this is so in a second. Now we extrude. I'm going to extrude in that direction. That's 1200. It's my 1200 extension, and my block is finished. Now the next one is the center extrusion, which is scaled. Now this gets a little trickier because now I've got to scale the extrusion from this size to this size. So I need to know what my scale factors are. And that's a calculation I have to make in relation to the size of this block and the size of this block. So my scale factors are as follows. These are the calculations for the extrusion. I've got you English and metric. These are in that PDF file. I'm using metric, so I'll start with the metric calculations. The first one, which is the block that I've just drawn, will be 600 in the x axis. And it's going to 1350 for the larger block. So my calculation is 1350 divided by 600 equals a scale factor of 2.25. So that's the x axis. 
And for the y-axis, we're going from 300 down to 140. Calculation is 140 divided by 300 gets us a scale factor of 0 0.467. So look at your PDF file and follow along with me again. So now I need to draw my next extrusion and I need the profile. So that is my profile and I'm going to extrude that. And I don't need to keep the original this time because the next original I need will be the one for this extrusion here. So that can come off. Scale factors from that calculation we just did in the x direction is 2.25. So that's 2.25. Make sure we take the lock off and enter. And my y factor is 0 0.467. So 0 0.467. And enter. And there's my scale factors. No spin angle, of course. OK. Let's try the extrusion. So now I must again be very careful where I select this profile. And I must select in the center. So again, I need my center snap. So F11 and center. And there it is right there. So now I'm dragging in this direction. Make sure you stay on the axis. And I'm dragging a distance of 1100 millimeters. Left click. And we're done. So there's my extrusion with the scale factors, and this is the result I get. Now I need to extrude the larger flat block, but there is no profile at this end. So I need to make a profile. Let's go back to green. And I need another block, which is now going to go from there, change the compass, there to there. So there's my next profile. So now we're going to extrude again. So let me select that profile first. Extrude again. Need to take these back now to one in both cases. We can grab the corner, pull this way, and the distance is 1500. There, that's my extrusion. So now we're done. So not particularly difficult. So long as you get your scale factors correct, then everything works out very nicely. But one big important point is the snap point for the extrusion. Now I'm going to undo this. And I'm going to put my factors back in again. OK, I've entered my two scale factors. And now I'm going to start the extrusion again. So I need to select the profile first, and we extrude. Now watch what happens if I select this corner as the extrusion start point. I drag this way. And it looks fine, but not quite the same as the model on the right hand side. So let's just data point anywhere and see what happens here. Pull that over to here. And let's rotate. Now look what's happened. The extrusion is flush with the bottom of the block on the left hand side. That's not what I wanted. It should be equidistant and centered. So this is what happens when you do that. And now we see that not only is the bottom flush, but the side is also flush with the previous block. So it's critical as to where that data point is to start the extrusion itself. More importantly, if you wanted flush ends and bottom surfaces, then that's how you would do it. So practice the various positions that you could extrude that one from. What you might also do is to try with a zero scale factor to see what happens as practice.